right. Good afternoon, everybody, or morning. I don't know where you might be calling in from. Uh, this is the third session of the uh, mini marketing conference. Uh, my name is Asinda Saragano, and my colleague Katie Wiggins Golick and I will be presenting in this session. So, with that said, we're going to go ahead and get started so that we live, uh, give plenty of time for the uh, two activities we're going to do. We're going to do two exercises in this session. Um, okay, so real quickly, um, if you don't, haven't already, please feel free to type your name and your institution in the chat and what you do. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Asinda Saragano, and at the University of Michigan, I and my colleague Jake, who is also one of the uh, pre uh, presentation or conference uh, uh, organizers, probably are the two who work in units that don't particularly serve one kind of student. So I work in the provost's office and Jake works in the International Center. And at U of M, which is a very decentralized institution with 19 schools and colleges, uh, we, we kind of serve as uh, decentralized sort of uh, federal governments, as you can say, where everybody can sort of lean towards us for resources around incoming and outgoing students. Jake works in the International Center, so of course serving international students. And myself, as you can see, I work in the provost office. So what I do in that role is curate resources for the website. I create a lot of materials for our network and for units who perhaps maybe don't have the staff capacity to perhaps do presentations or pre-departures. Uh, we do, I consult, um, I support a lot of our uh, working groups, including where this committee came out of the International Education Network. Um, and then I also do some stuff in our uh, travel management system and then work with our emergency response. Um, and with that said, I also wanted to share a quick tidbit about me. Um, I'm originally from Nigeria, uh, West Africa. And when I came to the States, my, my, uh, my daughter's dad is a wrestling coach. And at the time his team in high school won the state championship two back to back. And we interviewed and we did this whole thing where we like um, basically made two documentaries of these students, these high school students and their time in high school to highlight, you know, this amazing feat that they did of winning, winning uh, wrestling. And it really made me fall in love with video editing, even though I have no professional background. I have a, a bachelor's in international studies, a master's in public administration, nothing in marketing, but I've always been drawn to it. And it's probably with, to do with my creative side. So with that said, Katie, please feel free. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Katie wiggins Golick. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I am a global education advisor at the Stephen M. Ross School of Business here at the University of Michigan. And uh, my portfolio, uh, my role says advisor. Advising is a very small portion of what I do. Most of what I do is program management for uh, short-term faculty-led programs and exchange programs primarily in Spain and Latin America. Um, I have my own study abroad experiences in Spain and Greece, and I lived in Spain and worked with the awesome Semester in Spain program through Trinity Christian College, which I think uh, we might have someone from there on the call, so I'm very excited about that. But um, I love Canva. I'm super excited to be talking to you all about it. I use it at least twice a day in my daily work, not only for my advising and program management side, but also for the little bit of social media that I do manage um, for our office. My favorite ice cream flavor is anything with cookie dough in it. And in my free time, I am a competitive power lifter. I volunteer in the community. I love to cook and I love petting every single dog that I meet. So I am very excited to be here with you all today. Yes. Thank you, Katie. So we wanna go through these um, sort of general rules of engagement pieces real quickly. Um, so of course, rename yourself, please stay on mute. Uh, in case of a Zoom bombing, we do have a backup plan if that apocalypse happens, fingers crossed, and we will share the links out. In the interest of time, um, please make sure you've already navigated in a separate window to Canva and log in either to a free or paid account. Um, if you haven't already, go and find your university's brand and hex colors. A lot of us are marketers here, so Hopefully you know what that means. If not, uh, chat us and we will navigate and help you to find that. Katie, am I doing this for you? Um, I can take it. So if you get stuck today at any point, because we're going to be doing some interactive stuff, we will be monitoring the chat. So only one of us will be presenting at one time. So the other one's going to be taking care of chat while we're working on stuff. So if you have any questions, feel free to throw questions into the chat. Or if you have a question that you just can't type or it's way easier to say, use the raise hand feature and we will call on you to kind of talk through it. Um, and feel free to use the reaction buttons um, at the bottom of your screen if there's anything you like. 
Okay, real quickly, an overview of what we're going to talk about. The first part is just a, well, I, I don't want to say deep dive because that would, might take hours to do, but just a general sort of surface dive into Canva um, and also touch upon what branding is and means. I know many of us probably are not, you know, but just, just to get us all on the same page. Um, and in the second part, Katie's going to give us, run through an exercise she's prepared. Uh, we are all preparing for fall right now in, in many areas. And she's prepared a very timely exercise that hopefully you will all find helpful. Um, and then we'll leave some time at the end for questions. Okay, with that said, so I'm gonna kick off with talking a little bit about branding. Uh, as you all know, there's many, many words out there that have so many meanings and so many like, uh, like definitions. So when you hear branding, it's become very popular. I think even more so in the past two to three years because of, I think the boom and rise of all these social media platforms. Um, I, I'd like to say branding really, and there's tons of websites and articles, and I guess many of you already work in marketing, but I think for me, the simple definition of branding is the promotion of a particular product, company, or idea by means of advertising and a distinctive design. And I think that's the difference. What branding really is the distinctive design. So when you look at the, these three logos here, Nike and Marvel and U of M, like what do these three things have in common besides, you know, being, you know, what they are? I think in the world of marketing, these, these three logos, as soon as you see them, you know, no matter where you are in the world, really, and I, you know, most of us have traveled, it's not surprising to see Nike signs in, in many parts of the world, you know, immediately what that stands for, that just do it. When you see Marvel, you think, you know, Avengers go. I know Steven is super excited about Loki happening right now. So he's probably got Marvel all over his Twitter and stuff. And then the University of Michigan, go blue. I remember traveling a couple of years ago in uh, Nigeria and somebody saw my Michigan shirt and went, hey, go blue, like way across the street. So these, the, these, these uh, organizations have distinctive brands. They have colors, they have messages that as soon as you see them, you know exactly exactly what it is they're about. Um, so consider this, and this is something as we think about the exercise we're going to do in a couple minutes here. What are some feelings you want students to feel when they look at your Instagram posts or your prints um, and, and print, digital, print and digital posters or attend your fair? So we all know that saying that students, people, humans in general, they don't remember what you may have said, but they will remember how you made them feel. We, we're inundated constantly with messages, emails, tweets, bing bong, this, that. So if there's one, if there's something on your social media, in your marketing, in your that somehow resonates a feeling with students, that's what they're going to remember. That's when, that's when, well, that's what's going to make them like or follow you. Not necessarily the message of study abroad is amazing. Yeah, it is, but they see that everywhere. What feeling are you raising? Are you raising hope, uh, inspiration, whatever it is? So think about that as you're looking at images for your different brands and your and the brand of your institution. Um, and then one other point I wanted to make is if you, if you, you don't always have to brand just objects, uh, you can brand ideas such as international education and study abroad. So um, think about that too, as you're, as you're thinking about photos and language as you're using to brand your institution, your department, your events, right? So you can brand an event. In this upcoming um, exercise we're going to do, Katie's gonna walk you through branding a study abroad fair event. So. Okay, so before we get started, if you haven't already, retrieve your university's or institution's colors, uh, your institution logo, if you have it available, saved on your computer somewhere, that'd be great, and then your font. So I just did a, a worksheet where I pasted this real quickly in a separate like Google Doc, so I can quickly reference it. So with that said, quickly navigate to Canva, um, and I'm going to share in the chat a thing. Okay, let me get out of here. This is where it gets a little wonky. Please excuse this. Uh huh. Copy to clipboard. Um, at the very end, this is an editable Canva board that you can use to create a brand template for your department, for your university, your institution, whatever it is. So save that though till the end, you can open it and leave it to the side. But as we go through the activity, you'll be able to see how you can interface with this template. Okay, with that said, I'm going to go into Canva. Is my screen still showing everyone? Yes, okay, thank you. 
All right. So like Katie said, I use Canva all the time also for, for work as well as for personal. Um, so I'm going to be logging in. This is my personal account, which is paid. But for the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to use a paid a free account so that for those with the free account, you can see what that's about. But I I am I encourage like it's worth it for me. The, the paid account is worth it. So I'm logging in through my UMish account. Uh, Thank you. All right. So the first thing you want to do when you log into Canva and, uh, oh, I just realized, Katie, let me go ahead and launch the poll. Now that we're talking about it, we do have a poll. Um, we want to know and understand your, your Canva usability. I think this will be helpful. So we're launching the poll right now. Please feel free to, it's just three questions. So the first question is, what is your level of Canva usage? Uh, how would you rate your, you know, graphic design skills? And then do you have a free or paid Canva account? So we'll give you, you all about 30 more seconds to vote. And then we will share the results so that you all can also see where your colleagues stand uh, in the Canva world. And there are other platforms besides Canva. It's just one I think I've been using it since 2014, I believe. Um, it's just one that I'm just most comfortable with it. Okay. All right. Looks like the polling has somewhat slowed. All right. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and share results. So it looks like the majority of us use it sometimes um, and equal. Most, some of us use it either all the time or for many of us, this is the first time. So that's re actually really, really cool that we're going to show both the paid and then the free account. Uh, gra graphic design skills, most of us can get by. <laughs> Uh, and then finally, most of us are here with a, with, a, with a free account. Great. Okay, so thank you. All right. So if you're logged in now, I'm going to go ahead. So this should be what your template looks like. If not, just click on home or this Canva button here. It should take you right to this landing page because I really want you all to be able to follow after me. The neat thing about Canva is it allows you to create a brand kit. So whenever you're designing flyers, posters, Instagram stories, whatever it may be, you can always quickly pull in your brand distinctive design from your institution. So we're just going to go through an exercise here where we are going to create our brand for either our institutional organization or department. And when I say department, I say that because at U of M, for example, Stephen works at CGIS. They have their unique, you know, brand of how they promote their stuff. Katie's over in Ross, Vesta is over in nursing. I, Jake is over like me by himself over in like the everybody's world island. Um, so, okay. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you that if you wanted to add your logo and it's actually really helpful to do this, you do have to have a paid account. So if you want to add a logo so that anytime you need to just pull it into your, your, your flyers or whatever, you do have to have a paid account. And I believe it's about 12 a month. So with that said, though, every other thing um, you do not have to have a paid account for. And Katie has a paid account. So she's going to show you the cool features that are included in the paid account. Account. So I would just quickly brand colors is really just your institution's, um, you know, colors. So I'm going to go ahead and write University of Michigan, go blue. Um, and because I have this document here that shows me what my two institutions hex are, I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going to go back to my Canva. I'm going to click this fun little button. Canva is really interactive, I would say. Um, just highlight over the random number there and paste. I just control V and press enter or click outside. And there you go. You have your maze. Yay. Okay. Now next we're going to go get our blue. Where is our blue? All right. Let's go get our blue. I'm going to add it and voila, finish. That's it. I have my brand logos done. The neat thing, though, is you can create more brand colors. Sorry, not logos, brand colors. Um, so if you wanted to add another template up, clearly, I, I can only do that with a, with, a, with a paid account. But with the paid account, you can add, let's say, your theme for you're promoting like a summer 2022 program to Spain. And maybe the theme is like, I don't know, red and blue. You can create a separate palette template just for that specific event or activity, which is a really cool thing about Canva uh, if you have a paid account. Um, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is pulling your brand fonts, right? Because remember, branding is about having this distinctive like theme that's flowing through all of your things. Um, so at the University of Michigan, 
Uh, we have a department, like a centralized communications department, a lot of institutions have this, where they basically say, for this year or for the next five years, here's what you should be using when all your promotions, right? So at U of M, what they've told us is, let me zoom in a little bit closer. These are the general font type interfaces we can use, Montserrat, Nonito Sands, Meriwether, and these other ones. So these are what they say are University of Michigan brandable um, fonts to use. Um, Canva has a lot of fonts, so I'm gonna just go ahead. And the neat thing about what, so you see three different levels here heading, subheading, and body style. The heading is really, like many of us, when you're designing flyers and posters, there's, there's some words you want to really stand out, right? So what, 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 what font do you want that to be? So you wanna maybe, again, like me, I will look at this and say, okay, look at these, something boldish, maybe this Oswald. Um, and there are, um, I really encourage you, there are like Google resources where you can learn fonts actually also share, share can send messages. So anything that's sans serif, so that's basically these type that don't have the little tails at the end. They're more informal, they're more casual, they're more like, yeah, low key kind of fonts. Whereas these ones like Meriwether with the little tails, those are sheriff sans. Those are more like formal type for, you know, I, I guess you could say serious types of things. But really in the branding world, you can play around with different font colors. But I do encourage you to just, Go to a, maybe we can share some resources afterwards. There are some interesting articles out there to tell you and talk to you about how fonts can actually also incite different moods and emotions. Okay, so for the University of Michigan, I'm going to just decide to use, I love Montessori, it's just one of my favorite, and then this IBM Plex one. So I'm going to choose those two. So when I go back to my, my palette, I will just click on the first one and you don't have to use all three. You can actually just use one if you want to, uh, but I will use, I think I'll use these two. So for a subheading, subheading, um, I'm just gonna go here. And I like that IBM, IBM, if, it, if it's on here. Okay, so there's several IBMs and I believe it was IBM Plex Sheriff that my institution said I could use. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Oh, great. Okay. So I guess I have to have a paid account to do this. Let me see if other fonts will allow me to do this. So as you can see, some of you might be limited in this area. We are so sorry, but that is sort of the, um, these organizations have to make money too somehow. So this is how they do it by forcing you to uh, use their templates to make your life easier. But as I mentioned, uh, Katie is going to show you how this works in a um, paid account. And um, I just want to say real quickly, I can actually, let me just do a real quick exercise. I will just actually go into my page just so you can see how it would work if you wanted to add this. So here's brand. I have my, you know, personal stuff I do for myself and my own brand. But let's say I wanted to um, change these brand fonts. I would just click this, say Montserrat. It would let me click it and that's it. It's good to go. Canva doesn't always have every font in the world. You can also download the font externally on a separate site. And there are, I think if you just Google download a font, there are sites you can go to to download special sites, special fonts, download it, save it on your computer. And then Canva lets you upload it. Again, if you have a free account, a free account upload it into Canva. So you can always use that font whenever you want. So, um, so that's kind of the exercise in terms of just creating your brand template. I'm going to log out again and go back into my, my uh, free account here. And then I'll soon hand over to Katie. I'll quickly show you all how that brand board template works if, you are, if you've opened it. Um, and the neat thing about Canva is you can create templates and share them with everybody. So as you can see, I created this brand board template that I I'm envisioning to use next year for the Provost Office Global Engagement Team. Um, what you'll wanna do is uh, you can copy, and I think you can copy, I see several people in this right now, which is great. So copy and save it into your own personal thing. You can change the fonts, um, you can change the colors. Um, down here on this mood board, this is essentially my 
sort of. So the theme this year I'm thinking about for the office and for the network is reimagining international education. So I thought about, you know, collaboration is such a huge aspect of the way we're going now with, you know, international education but because of the technology, because of Zoom, because a lot of us are working hybridly now, it's so helpful to be able to, to work together. So I'm thinking of incorporating this this year. I have a video thing because I'm thinking about doing more videos throughout the year. Um, culture. So again, this is really just something you can create for your department and share out so that everybody's on the same page with what you're hoping to, you know, brand and create and celebrate throughout the year. So with that said, any, okay, we're leaving the questions for the end. Um, Katie, I'm going to hand over to you. Sound good? Okay. Stop share. Awesome. All right. So share my screen now. Actually, hold on, stop share for a second and optimize for video just in case. Okay. So for our part two of our um, education abroad branding, or in this case, uh, it might not be education abroad that you're working in, but for the example we're going to give, um, we're going to pretend that hypothetically you are preparing to throw a uh, fall study abroad fair, and you are thinking of how you want to, as we talked about in our first session today, create kind of this marketing plan and strategy. And so as you're thinking about that strategy, hypothetically, we want to create a set of branded materials in Canva to promote this fall study abroad fair. So you've already thought about it. You've got your plan. And in your plan, you've got the four following things that you want to make sure that you create. And they're all branded the same way. So the first thing is that you know that you want to create a Facebook event page for your fall study abroad fair. And so in Canva, we're going to create a cover photo for that event page. Um, and we're also going to learn more as we're talking about that, about searching for photos that meet your needs. You also want to do a testimonial series. You decide you want to do that on Instagram. And so you're going to create a series of Instagram posts. And so I'm going to show you how to duplicate things really quickly for that Instagram post to save yourself a lot of time and keep things really clean and in kind of the same design family. Um, you also decide for the fair that you want to do like a rem reminder the day of the fair, and you're going to do that in your Instagram story. So I'll show you how to use videos and put together like a really cool, uh, quick Instagram story in Canva. And then you also decide that you want to do a presentation that's going to be kind of like scrolling media in the actual event itself. And so with that, we're going to show you how to create templates, which can be a really great time saver for you and your team. So with that... Okay. Can you see my screen, Asinda, with Canva on it? I don't have like the little green frame around my... Yes, I can see your screen, Katie. Okay, perfect. It's not giving me the little green frame that says that it's sharing, but we will trust it. So when you open up your Canva, and again, I'm using a paid account, um, there are a lot of really helpful features just right here on the homepage. So you can look at all your designs you've created, any designs maybe the teammate made that sh they shared with you, your brand kit, which Ascenda just went through, content planner, which is really great. If you have a paid account, you can schedule your social media posts, which is awesome. And this feature templates is gonna be really key. So I use this all the time and it's a quick way to access uh, pre-made templates or just a blank uh, canvas that's the right size for everything. So for our first thing, we decided to do this Facebook cover photo. And I've already pre-created one here and I wanna talk about some of the design choices that went into it and some really cool tips that you can work with. So for our Facebook design photo for our hypothetical Wolverine University study abroad fair, um, I've made a few choices on how I want to kind of keep branding consistent. I really like this uh, kind of like bubble design or like using kind of part of a circle across a photo. And I'm gonna carry that consistently over all the designs I've decided. And I'm gonna use it in kind of like a transparent way so you can still see what's underneath it. Um, and then I made these font choices based on the Verlag font, which is actually our Ross font that I work with a lot. And then this Sedgwick font um, that I just thought went nicely with it. 
and I decided to add like a little bit of a white shadow to this font. So all of these branding choices that I've made in this initial design are going to be, um, oh, zoom in a little bit, gotcha. There we go. Um, and so we are going to, um, we're gonna see these design elements kind of carry over. But I wanted to talk a little bit about something that can be really, really helpful when you're um, looking for photos um, that are stock photos. Um, in our Goldilocks and the Three Bear session, we talked about, well, what do you do if you don't have like a lot of student photo content um, or you're looking for a photo and like none of the photos that your students have submitted to you really fit what you're looking for. Stock photos can be really, really great for that. One thing you'll notice with Canva as you start working with it a lot and looking through their stock photos is that systemic racism is everywhere and that includes algorithms that show us photos. And so um, you'll see here, if I go to photos, if I'm gonna maybe add another photo to this, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit, um, to this piece and maybe I'll do it on another page here. But um, if I just search like, travel friends in the photos it brings up a whole lot of white people uh just mostly white people hanging out it would just you know fine but not necessarily like what i want to have on all of our branded materials so something that you can do if you find a photo that um that does kind of meet at least a little bit of what you're looking for is when you hover over a photo these three little dots appear in the corner. And if you click on it, you'll see that you have all of these keywords. And those keywords can be really, really helpful because you can start to see how they've actually tagged this photo. So if I were to search for a group of young people, fun and toothy smile, I might get a photo that kind of has all of those elements in it. Um, happy friends in the European city. All this to say that like these are not search terms that naturally kind of come to mind when I'm looking for um, looking for photos like I I don't want to have to be like Asian friend plus Hispanic friend Paris like I don't want to have to be that specific um, and sometimes I don't exactly know what I'm looking for I, I know it when I see it so this keyword can be really great because you start searching and you kind of find something like oh that's kind of it but not quite that keyword feature can be really really helpful so actually I got this photo doing the same thing I had done a few searches and um, didn't really like what was coming up but I found a photo that was kind of what I wanted but also the people in the photo were clearly in their 40s and 50s and wasn't really the content that I wanted for um, a study abroad fair. But when I went into those keywords, it said multi-ethnic group and that's how I got this photo. So instead of maybe searching for travel friends, if I say travel multi-ethnic group, That gives me a lot more content in terms of diversity. And obviously some of them are not necessarily travel related um, or easily associated with travel, but this one looks pretty good. So if I pull this one and pull it down onto the next page here. Katie, while you're doing that, let me just mention, I noticed when I was in the, the, the free account yesterday, if you're not seeing photos, if you click on more on the left-hand side, um, you'll see a bunch of other like things you can do in Canva. So just in case you're like, where are all these photos? Just click more and you'll see a thing that says photos, music, and all that, all that, all that good stuff. Thank you, Asinda. That's very helpful. Um, and so this might be another photo that I decide that I really want to use. Um, and so that's just a really great way in terms of creating um, content with really great representation um, and to save you a lot of time in like being very specific and having to scroll through tons and tons of photos, that keyword search feature can really be really useful. So we've got our Facebook cover photo. And again, this is, I used a Facebook cover photo template. So this is gonna be the perfect dimensions that when I download it and go to upload it into Facebook, that it's gonna fill that cover photo space perfectly. And I don't have to worry about the dimensions being off. So we've got that covered. Let's go to our Instagram posts. 
So we decided for Instagram posts for this hypothetical fair that we wanted to um, we wanted to do something that would showcase some student testimonials, which is really great. Um, but we want to do a series of them. And it took me, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes to get this exactly where I wanted it. I am uh, a person wearing a lot of hats and I don't want to spend all day creating a series of five different Instagram posts that can go up over the course of a few weeks leading up to this fair. But I, I do want to be able to have some really great content. So this duplicate feature is really, really handy. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to click on this little button right here and it's going to duplicate this page right below it. And so now I have two identical posts. And doing this is a really great way to save time if you want to keep things kind of branded consistently, because now I have all of these elements that I can manipulate again and recreate something that looks really similar, but also different. So that if you go and upload these into our grid for our Instagram, everything looks really cohesive and like it meshes really well together. You can tell it's meant to be a series, but everything still looks unique um, in its own right. So now that I've duplicated this, I'm going to turn this into a completely new testimonial quote in about three minutes or less. Maybe we'll see how quickly my computer responds. But so uh, I have a quote from a student that went on our Guatemala Spring Break program. So I'm going to get rid of uh, this photo. I'm just going to click on it and delete. Then I'm going to go find a new photo. And for the purpose of showing you, I've already kind of pre-identified a photo that I'd like to use, but maybe you have a student photo already that you can upload. And so you can use that upload feature, which is really, really helpful. Um, I don't have any of my students permission to use their photos during this. So I am going to use stock photos. And I know there is one down here. Perfect. So I'm going to use this, which is from Lake Atitlan. We're going to put that there, but where this bubble is, I don't want the bubble, maybe the speech in the same spot every time. So I'm gonna manipulate this a little bit and maybe I'll bring it up here. And that kind of looks nice and it almost looks like the sun. And then I'll move this over and kind of center it, select all that text and I'm gonna make it a center aligned. And then the student quote is, I've grown in more ways than I can count. And then we'll also move this over. Canva has these, if you can see as I'm moving, they have these little pink lines that help you align things so that um, you can, you don't have to nitpick if things are centered. Canva will tell you, which is great. And this student is Chris Miller from the um, Mala Spring Break Program. There we go. So, and it's a little rough. I would probably play with this a little bit longer just to get it where I wanted. But in three minutes, I've duplicated this and created it. And it, I could probably create a series of five of these in less than 20 minutes. And I have my whole social media done for the next two weeks. So that duplicate feature can be really, really helpful. Once you get a design that you like, you can just duplicate and duplicate and duplicate and then mess with it a little bit to change it. But when you're doing that, you're keeping everything on brand and you're saving yourself a ton of time. So I really, really like uh, using that feature a lot. It's a great time saver. So hey, next, can yeah. you do a quick thing? Can you highlight a picture and flip it the other way so that they can see just like different things you can do with pictures too? Yeah, sure. So if I use this same, if you hover over the whole thing, it'll fill, fill it in. But say I was gonna put this in like a flyer, but I didn't want him to be looking at the thing from this way. I can drag it and, oops, no, not that way. I can flip it this way and I can flip it horizontally so that it's facing the other direction. If I really wanted to get wonky and I wanted it to be upside down, I could do that as well. So this is a really great, there's also a lot of filter um, options so I can make it more um, like nostalgic looking if I want to, um, etc. So there's a lot of really fun things to uh, play around with in Canva. 
that can definitely, you can tweak a lot um, and make it look really customized. And like you spend a lot of time on it for very little actual minutes of your day, um, which is really, really great. So let's move on. The more you use Canva, the more like the hats will just become faster and faster when it comes to this Canva thing. Absolutely. So let's move on to our Instagram story. So Instagram stories on Instagram are intended to be really short. Um, usually uh, just 20 seconds or so um, is a great time length to kind of shoot for. So I'm going to show you, I already created this Instagram story, but I'm going to go show you how to find the template and create a new one um, pretty easily. So when I play this, you're going to see, this is what students will see when they watch our Instagram story when I upload it. So when you remember the Wolverine University study abroad fair is today and it's a yay celebration and it shows them where it is. So this something like this is really, really fun to create. I love creating like short videos and things like that. So, um, but Instagram stories, uh, if you are with Steven and I are a great way to engage with your audience that aren't just kind of like formal announcements or reminders or things like that. So it can be really, really great um, to do like more cult, like pop culture-y type things. So I actually love doing memes on Instagram story, um, but changing the memes to be very relevant to what we're doing. So as my computer takes its time loading here, if we do like a social media template, and an Instagram story. And I'm just gonna start from scratch here. Thanks for your patience while my laptop keeps up with itself. <laughs> All right. So I already kind of have a vision in my head. I think I want to do, I'm going to do a reminder about our, um, our upcoming exchange deadline, maybe. And so I'm going to scroll down here and click on videos. And I want to convey the sense of like, hey, if you've already submitted your application, you can relax. My God, dog. There we go. And wait, there's some random stock photo in here. Uh, if you ever um, are bored, Canva can be a really fun place to find like, what do people take stock photos of? This is very strange. So I'm gonna put this dog video in here of this dog relaxing. And I'm going to rotate it so that it's vertical. I want those degrees to be at 90. Oops, exactly. Perfect. And then I'm gonna make it nice and big. We've got my dog on here and I'm gonna just throw in, these elements are great. They're kind of like clip art or like background pieces, things like that. So I'm just gonna throw in like a, a yellow rectangle in our branded Wolverine University colors. So I'm just gonna type in square. And I'll break that down here. Across, and I'm going to change it to our branded palette colors. So I have my U of M maize and blue here, and I'm going to make this a little bit transparent in my gradient so that you can still see a little bit of the dog's paws through it. All right, and I'll add my text.
for any uh, marketing like nerds out there, you can get really lost in Canva for a very long time because there's so many neat like features and like graphic design things in it. So I um, encourage you to take, just take time to explore it. So I said when the deadline is tomorrow, but you submitted your app last week. <laughs> Down. And again, this is probably not my best design work given that we're doing it uh, live and quickly, but you get the idea. And I think I might wanna animate this text too. So I think I'll do, uh, maybe like a fade. And so it'll give you a little bit of preview of that. So what we end up with, if I go to the preview feature is this little meme. on our Instagram story. And it's just short and sweet, it's 10 seconds, um, but it's a fun way to remind students about things that's not just like, remember, do this, remember, do that. So it's a really great way to engage with students on your social media in maybe like more of a fun way um, and uh, be a little bit more lighthearted so that they kind of see you as human people and, and like real individuals and not just like a face of an office all the time. So the last thing I wanted to show you is just a very quick way on how you can create a template that you can share with your office. If you have like a, uh, a Canva account where you've got multiple people using the same account. So for this example, I created just a very quick slideshow. Um, and I used that duplicate feature again to make things real easy. This is something I like to do for our, um, our study abroad fairs is just to create a highlight of different photos of the places where we have programs, um, which I think is really, really cool. And the fact that Canva has such like stunning high quality imagery that you can put, especially if you're putting it up on a big screen, like it's a little bit captivating. Also, fair warning, I got such bad FOMO when I was <laughs> putting this together. I was like, look at all the places I can't go right now. It's very sad. Um, but as you kind of scroll through here, like you can see that these are just really, really visually drawing images and I love doing something like this where it's just like something on in the background at a fair you don't have to pay a lot of attention to it you can set it and forget it it's just going to roll the whole fair but it really adds a lot of ambiance and I have caught more than one student just like eyes glazed over staring at the screen um, during a fair and it's just like it's really cool to see students be like wow I never knew that for example like Peru has these beautiful colorful mountains like that's amazing. I want to go there. And it creates a lot of that, like, wow, I want to do that. I want to see that. I want to see the world. So really, really cool and easy. But there's something really awesome about being able to make this. Like if I had a fall fair and a winter fair, maybe I want different locations or I want to change the photos out. I can create a template actually. And that way this is easy to replicate with different content. So you're going to go to these three dots here and you'll hit template. If template is not in your recommended, you can just type in template in this, how would you like to publish? And it'll come up for you. So if you hit template, it'll ask you like where you want, what folder you wanna save it to. So I've already created a folder with templates for all of the other things. So these templates, we'll make them available and they'll be editable templates that you can use for your social media if you wanna, um, like use these examples or use them, absolutely. So those will be available in the resources after the conference, we'll post them. Um, so I'm gonna save it in this um, folder. I'm gonna publish the template and I'll say, great. And then this template then is editable and copyable and you can edit the template without editing the original design. It just makes your life a lot easier and helps to save you a lot of time. So my computer's catching up right now. Um, Katie, it looks like we have a question. Oh my goodness, it's me. Hey, oh. Katie, can I present from Canva while I'm at my study abroad fair? You absolutely can. So if you, let's see here, if I go back to my presentation. So, 
there is a cool feature where you can present in Canva, but there are some limitations. For example, like a slideshow like this, where I would want scrolling, I wouldn't present from Canva because there's no way to like loop the slideshow. You can put automatic timings on it, but there's no way to get it to start back over again. Um, so that can be uh, a bit of a hassle if you're looking to loop, but you can put timings on your slide so that it does go through automatically. And you would just do that from this handy present button and it walks you through everything. So it's really, really great. And the great thing about that is you can put in animations on things. You can insert GIFs and videos into your slideshow presentation and then present directly from Canva. Um, so I do that a lot for our info sessions um, and it makes your slides look super snazzy, super professional. Students are like clearly engaged because your slides look way better than a random like Google Slides or PowerPoint that you might throw together at the last minute. So if you can create one and then save it as a template, you can update it and then present it from Canva and it saves you a lot of time and makes you look super professional and like you have all of your design put together and really you only spent maybe a quarter of the time in it that it looks like you did. So those are my Canva tips and tricks. <laughs>